Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Sunday morning. It's good to have you with us this morning. Welcome to our saviors. I am Pastor Carrie, and today um, we are celebrating AJ's baptism. Uh, so it, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Um, so that'll be in the midway of our service. AJ is Adam and Breeze's son uh, and Jenny's stepson, and we're so thankful for his presence here. And he's in our confirmation class, so he's getting baptized and then confirmed in June. So uh, it's exciting, and he's a great young man. And so pray for him and his sponsors, Candace and Jordan, today, and his parents. So... It is wonderful to see all this family surrounding him today. And so uh, your baptism part, the service itself is in the insert, and I'll tell you when to come up and bring your little insert when you come. And those of you who are in the pews, you have your little insert, and we'll be doing that after uh, the sermon today. Other announcements, yes, we do have seventh grade confirmation is coming up uh so uh eighth graders have been meeting now seventh graders are going to join them and if grandparents if you're worried i am texting parents so they will know but just to re put it in your brain too that um seventh graders are beginning to meet again i will see you miss julia and miss ha. <laughs> um I would like to meet with council just briefly after worship for just a five minutes sort of moment. I have some information from the synod that I need to share with you. And so um, if we could just meet in the fellowship room after worship, that would be wonderful. Are there any other announcements this morning that we need to be aware of or anything we need to note? If not, we begin with our hymn. So your bulletin has pretty much everything you need to say printed in it. So you don't necessarily need the hymnal except to sing the hymns. So our service is printed there. You can kind of follow along. Your hymns are found in the red hymnal in front of you. And we are going to begin by singing hymn number 448. This is the Spirit's entry now, the water and the word, the cross of Jesus on your brow, the sea. to your bulletin for our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep all who are born of water and spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. These readings are from Isaiah. But now, says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the waters they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom. Ethiopia and Selby in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The second part of this comes from Psalm 29, and you should have it in your hands so you can follow along. Ascribe to the Lord your gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes the Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees wreath and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the floods. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. 
O Lord, give strength to your people and give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. This next section comes from Acts 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard the Samara had accomplished the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, Jesus, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. And I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Eight years ago, I was sitting on my couch on a Saturday afternoon when I got a call from a congregation member. Her name is Faye, and she called because her daughter, Emily, who was pregnant with her twin girls, had been taken to United Hospital in St. Paul, which was the hospital we went to, just so you know. I lived outside of the cities. And she said at that moment that her unborn twins were not doing well. We didn't really know what that meant, nor I think the doctors did at the moment she made the call. So I put on pants, because you need to have pants to get into a hospital. And uh, I got in my car, and I traveled the 40 miles into the Twin Cities to the hospital. By the time I got to Emily's room, the doctor had been in with the news. The babies were extremely critical, and they needed to be born now, three months before their due date. We gather together around Emily's bed, and we prayed over her and her yet unborn girls. The nurses then dressed me in scrubs 
and positioned me outside of the OR in case I needed to baptize these babies directly after being born. They were unsure at that moment whether they would be born alive or not. And they were prepared for the worst. And so was I. I stood there for quite some time until a nurse came out and told me that the girls were doing surprisingly well and that they were being taken to the NICU. And so a little time later at the NICU, their family, her Emily's father, mother, and her teenage daughter and I would gather around two little cribs and with a bottle of sterile water and a Q-tip I would mark the cross of Christ on foreheads of babies that were less than a pound each. And I would say, child of God, you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You have been sealed with the cross of Christ and marked with God's Holy Spirit now and forever. A year later, Emily and I would stand in front of the congregation. Each of us would hold a year-old little girl, Lainey and Lila. They would now have names. And Emily would cry as I would also weep in tears as she would make the promises that she would raise these little girls as Christians. And the congregation together would proclaim that they would welcome them into the church, into the family of God. It took a year to complete the whole of the baptismal service that we'll do today. Lutheran churches allow for that, actually. If you look at the service in our hymnal, it is followed by one called the welcoming of the baptized, which is for this, those moments when we baptize in the hospital or in other rare and unusual places when we are not surrounded by family and friends and the congregation as a whole. But we would make the promises, the commitments, we would proclaim the faith. We would wash in water and God's holy word. And we would welcome these little girls into the family of God, into a group of the faithful. Water and the word. These are the two necessary elements for baptism. People are usually surprised when they ask me, where do I get the water from? You probably noticed me run out with a pitcher, right? And so they're usually surprised when I say, the sink? <laughs> they think it's something miraculous, but it's not. And they said, well, isn't it special or, or like, you know, holy water? And my statement is, it's hot. <laughs> And they look at me and I go, hot water. That's what you use in baptisms. Because then by the time we get to the middle of the service, it's lukewarm and babies cry less with lukewarm water than with cold. So hot water. <laughs> and it, it's warm. It'll be warm. That's it. Hot water. I assume that the water at the Jordan River was probably pretty cold when John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus. I don't know. We don't know what time of year it was. That's the question that sort of is up there. But there are times when uh, the Jordan River is kind of chilly, especially in January, though it is not Wisconsin cold. I trust and tell you that from experience. But it does dip down there in the 40s, and it would be chilly to be standing in a water, being baptized in 40-degree weather. So we're not exactly sure. We do know that the people who gathered there on that bank 
knew something of water rituals. And that John's baptism was a surprise and yet not. It was not so much a surprise because there were already rituals within the Jewish tradition of washing. There are pools that sit outside of the temple. They are carved into the ground. They have nice little steps. And so we know that as part of some of the Jewish traditions, babies and adults washed at some point for certain rituals within the temple. We're not sure if they washed themselves every time they went into the temple or if it was just something that they did, men and women, at certain times of the year. We also know that around the time of John's baptism, there was a tradition that was starting to appear within Judaism. New converts to the faith would be circumcised, which was an old tradition that came from Abraham. And they would also be baptized. We also know that water rituals were a part of some Roman groups. And so as a part of the initiation into certain groups in Rome, you would then be washed in water. And so the people on the banks of the Jordan gathered new of water rituals. They may have even known somewhat of baptisms. The difference was that John was baptizing for the forgiveness of sins as a preparation for the coming of the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And that, that had never happened before. People wondered if John was actually the Messiah. He preached, he baptized people. It makes sense a little bit, but he says, oh no, oh no, the one who is the Savior of the world, he is coming. He is already here. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This washing comes with ordinary water. Turn on the tap, put a little water. As ordinary as the manger or the cross. And yet through God they are too transformed. For like the water of baptism, they carry God to us. Water and the Word. When we talk about the Word, we mo mean both the Bible. Gaze Mills, I had a Bible. I was a little more prepped there. <laughs> the Bible, God's Holy Word, and Jesus. We talk about it in both ways. We read in the Gospel of John, as John testifies, the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. We know that Jesus is God's Word, born in human flesh. And that God's Word is carried through ordinary water, through washing, given to us in baptism. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened. And the heaven has been opened before. When the Holy Spirit filled Mary and told her she was going to have a baby, when the angels filled the sky and sang to the shepherds at the night, and the manger was filled with God. And the heavens, they will be opened again. As the cross carries Jesus. And all of creation mourns. And God dies for the sins of the world. For you and for me.
the heavens were opened and the spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form like a dove. Literal bird just hanging out on his shoulder. <laughs> just sitting right here, little parrot kind of thing going on. I don't know if it talked to him. I don't ask those questions, but it's a weird image, beautiful image. And then a voice came from heaven and said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And I always wonder about the voice. Is it small and little, or is it big and booming like the voice of Psalm 29 that Phyllis read for us today? A voice that splits trees and remakes creation. Did the people who gather on the banks of the Jordan River, did they hear this voice? Because it doesn't necessarily say that they do. Or is this big voice just for Jesus himself? We don't know. But we do know that what the world, this is what the world looks like when it is being remade. Jesus' baptism in the Jordan is what it looks like, what it sounds like when God works to remake the world from one bound in sin and pain and suffering and death to one of hope and salvation beyond our sin and beyond our death. This recreation will continue as Jesus preaches and heals and invites and accepts the people. As he journeys from the banks of the Jordan to the Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem to his own death on the cross. God's recreation will continue with this beloved son in his death. And after three days of death and decay, he will wash off the sin and death of this world and remake us and all of creation. That means you and me. When you are washed in water and word, in a few moments when A.J. is washed in water and the Word. Water was spilled over your head in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And hands were laid upon you and we prayed for the Holy Spirit to come. The sign of the cross was traced on your forehead with the words, you are sealed with the cross of Christ forever. On that day, like A.J. will be today, you were surrounded by parents and godparents, friends and family, the people of God, fellow pilgrimers on this journey from life to death to new life in Christ. You may not have gotten a dove landing on your shoulder, and I don't think we will today either. Or a big booming voice that calls you God's beloved. It would be cool, but it might not happen. But it doesn't change the fact that you are remade. Given new life in Christ, the old, the sin, the death, the devil, these were put to death and you have risen out of the waters into new life as God's redeemed and remade creation. An everlasting, eternal change. You are called God's very own, God's child, God's beloved, as you are washed in water and the word. Amen. We are going to sing. We're going to sing. 445. Wash, O oh God, your sons and daughters.
by your milk may we be fed. Let us join your feast partaking, cup of blessing, living bread. God, renew us, guard our footsteps, free on sin. in that direction. AJ here. We usually do a little intro and then I was kind of crazy. So you stand there. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. <laughs> Looks good. Look at all these people you're surrounded by. Yes, as many of you want to come up. I'm good with that. So I invite you to find your insert. And I'm looking at you because you're going to have a part in just a little bit. You get to pour water. I did not warn you about that. That's why you have to have the rope. I know. I know. I know. It's, it's, it's the one moment here. AJ had to do it for friends. You're going to do it for his. Okay. <laughs> God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and rises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. AJ, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to be baptized into Christ? Godparents and parents, do you promise to nurture AJ in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support AJ and pray for him in his new life in Christ? I invite you to participate in the profession of faith, so you are the bold. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Okay, Shaylee, I need you to pour water while I read the prayer, the blessing. Just pour it into the, into the yep, got it. Slowly. <laughs> we give you thanks, O God, for the, in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and your word created the world. You call forth life into you took delight, and through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit in the power of your living word that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. Just a minute. Let's do this. Let's see if we can. Okay. You may want to take off your glasses. You're just going to lay your head down. Okay. AJ is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. <laughs> You're not so wet. <laughs> We're going to pray over you, so I invite you as family uh, to gather around him and lay your hands on him. So uh, from Acts 8 today, we had this whole reading about how the apostles come and they lay hands on them and they pray for the Holy Spirit, and that's where we get this. So let us pray. We give thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and your sons new birth and cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain AJ with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Okay. AJ, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. This is the candle that I told you we light it off of the candle that's gone out. Steve, my flame won't keep on this candle, so we're going to have to work on it. <laughs> this is a reminder of your baptism, that in you the light of Christ burns brightly. That light has always been there, but this day we recognize it and rejoice in it. And may it forever burn within you. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. 
and I invite you to turn it over and to welcome AJ. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and to bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And let's applause! Yay! <laughs> Welcome. You can blow out your candle because you get to light it again. So, and we maybe we'll set it up here so you don't drip wax all over. But this is for you to take home, okay? Not the candle holder, just the candle. <laughs> Welcome. Congratulations. We know you have always been God, but today we make that public profession that you are God's and always will be so. You guys may be seated, and we're going to continue with our prayers. So I invite you all to... Today as we pray, I invite you to notice that the, the response has changed. So at the end of each petition, I will say, God of grace, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, and so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Let us pray. By the Holy Spirit, your, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service that all people know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, hear our prayer. You reveal your love and pour power through spirit and the water. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace, hear our prayer. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all who are in need. We pray especially for Luann, Tyler, Mike, Sandy, Cooper, Debbie, Lola, Elling, Peggy, Jim, Ron, Jeannie, Jason, Rodney, and dawn. God of grace, hear our prayer. You, we are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless AJ, our newly baptized. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice. Be with AJ as his life continues in Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. You have created each of your saints for your glory, and we give thanks for those who have called you by name and have, are living in your internal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all your, of your prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we will gather our offering. Our offertory hymn is um, Everybody's Got Something to give, Offer, which is printed in your bulletin.
everybody's got something to offer. Young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer. In the name of the Lord. To the lost and the holy ones, the message it is clear. We have all Let us pray. We praise you, O oh God, for your creating, liberating, and life-giving word. You set the foundations of the world. You lead your people into freedom. You lift up the lowly and fill the hungry with good things. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. Send us forth in the power of your spirit that our lives may witness to your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. May the God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance to Christ Jesus. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, before I say our final hymn, I forgot to announce one more thing. As you're going out... Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see a little bookcase with a bunch of little books there. Um, I thought it would be kind of fun to offer some reading materials, if you would like, a little curl up with a book on um, this winter, especially when it's kind of cold. Some of us are big readers. And so these are books that are faith-ish. <laughs> I say that because there's a lot of Luther books there. Some of them are, most of them are nonfiction, so most of them are books either about church. Uh, there's a few devotionals there, if that's something you want to. Um, there's a couple fictional novels. I have a few more coming. Most of them you wouldn't find in the library. They're sort of churchy books that I thought might be kind of interesting for some people. They're just ones you take, bring back when you're done with them. If that takes you a month or two or six, that's perfectly fine. They have little stickers in them that say, please return to the church. So you remember, oh yeah, that's not my book. Um, and so I thought it might be just kind of fun. So you can look at them. Um, there are more at Luther Memorial, and I think in about a month I'll flip them so that you get the books that Luther Memorial has and they get your books. But if that's something that you're interested in, in reading or looking for a little devotional, there are some short story kind of books there. Feel free to peruse my little our little library and take as you will. We're going to sing our final hymn, number 396.
You just start over? Okay, because I did not start with Spirit. Yeah. God.